So this episode's called The Sound Argument. So I think we're gonna get down to brass tacks, down to the nitty gritty. Let's, let's talk about a plan, let's talk about the plan, let's get down to it. What's up Dapper Squad, it's your boy Darius, back at it again, season four, episode 10, or should I say the final season, episode 10. I am so excited to hop into this. Last episode was a great breath of fresh air, a little relaxing calmness, after the crazy chaoticness that happened throughout the entirety of the season, pretty much. But we ended off with a crazy spot. And I do want to say, that even though I thought I paid a lot of attention throughout that episode, during editing and afterwards rewatching it, I missed so many things that I just want to point out real quick. Um, the conch that Armin is holding during throughout the entire episode when he's talking to Annie is the conch that he gets from the beach, which is a very important thing to him. It symbolized, you know, that they're not trapped in these walls. It was super with his parents, all that. It was super big symbolism with that. The little girl who was with uh, Sasha's parents when they were visiting their, or their grave is the little girl that Sasha saved in season three. I'm pretty sure it was. And that's just... That's so nice, and I'm, I remember that episode vividly when the mom was getting eaten and Sasha went ham, shot him in the eye, you know, all that, you know, yeah, 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 that was amazing. Also, the quote that is shared between Mikasa and Eren at the end when they're talking about live and win, you only can win by fighting, stuff like that. That's almost verbatim the exact quote that Eren was saying to Mikasa when she first, like, uh kind of flipped her her Ackerman switch and kind of went crazy on those guys who ended up murdering her parents where her and Aaron killed like was it all three of the guys or two of the guys something like that I just that was almost verbatim which is such a good tie back to the beginning and it just shows how much these characters have actually gone through and then of course the Niccolo who Niccolo was the one at the beginning who it was not a fan of elder uh was not a fan of parody at all these devil Eldians all that but then his relationship and his growth towards Sasha especially is just it touched my heart so much so I just wanted to point that out, point those out it was so much detail in the show so much amazingness that i always miss and i love it isayama you're a god you really are but i'm gonna hop into this episode remember if you guys want full length to this entire episode this whole show all the other shows i'm watching check out that patreon down below don't forget to follow me if you guys are not subscribed make sure to subscribe click that bell follow me on all the social medias instagram twitch and twitter at dapper darius let's hop into this attack on titan season four episode 10 a sound argument yeah he literally is saying this in his prison cell in front of hanji I never believed you would sacrifice Historia. It wasn't the whole point, so he didn't have to sacrifice. The plan started three years ago. This is two years ago. That's the lady who saved Udo! And this was two years ago. Is that the Ackerman family crest? Someone did comment that she looked very similar to Mikasa's mom. And of course, from the East, Eastern, you know, Oriental, that's what they say in the show. Interesting. So they're all the Ackerman whole clan is descendant. Yeah, are the descendants of the old shogunate? Okay, that's quite the news. That is the most facts I've heard so far. That's crazy. Yes, I love I love Pixie since like episode ten or whenever he was introduced. <laughs> you know, that's a good way to relate to someone, right? <laughs> it's a bond you can't really share with too many people. I could see that. 
迎えられたのは私たちを引き合わせてくれたジークイエーガーの存在が不可欠でしたこちらをご覧くださいこれはあれご存知でしたかうん、that would give it away some information that they know, huh? Which he took off the one guy who he killed in season two. Yeah, when he was throwing the horses and all that. I remember that, man. That sucks. RIP that guy. Honestly, yeah. Mass producing those would. Well, yeah. For the rumbling and all that, for the whole Eldia Empire, you know? A test run? Okay, just a sample? Alright, I'd be, I'd be willing to see that. Yeah. 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 I can, okay. I can see why this was an issue. She was so willing. She definitely has a resolve that's been unmatched for a long time. As long as it's for her people, she's willing to do whatever. Yeah, right? Literally like livestock. For a sole purpose. I understand why Aaron would feel like that after all he's gone through. I understand it. So is that why he went on his own? He is really a lone wolf right now. He is, he is not going with any of the plans. He did do that. So pretty much. I'm just glad Hanji's taking that well, because that was fucking dark. Aaron, oh my lord. <laughs> I feel bad for Hanji, and I feel bad for Ervin. I miss my boy. Oh. Okay. So that was early. Yeah, that's my man, Nile. Okay. Okay. That is an interesting story. I can understand why they would think that. Some of the upper ups are crazy. That's true, the entire plan goes to waste. That sound argument. That is a sound argument. I could see why he would think it would ruin the country. This is a this is a tricky situation. That's crazy to think. You are the anchor, the rock that stabilizes the rest of the world by hating you. Right. I like how they're. I can know if it's a flashback or present time with Aaron's hair. That's a good, good piece of info, you know. That is. A, that's been quotes forever. One thing man always will fear is the unknown. I always admire Hanji's curiosity and respect. That is true. That is what scouts do. I don't know. Oh, this train is awesome. This locomotive. 
本場の回れ料理にしたつつも何かが変わるかもしれない。So this was our goal in planning a meeting with them. Just over five years. Okay. That is such a big conversation I would hate to have. Who's gonna eat me? Valid point. <laughs> I love John. Fucking horse face. It's my guy. I actually think John would be a, a, a real good inheritance for that. I get that. Yeah. Especially from someone who has it currently. You know, he thinks it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. A necessary evil, we shall say. So, I get where he's coming from. So sad to think. They're such good friends. They've literally been, literally been through hell together. And we still can't fully get along, see eye to eye, and people are still dying. And the freedom is not won yet. It's so sad to think about. Yeah, that did shock me last episode. It did. Makes sense. Yeah, after what he was saying throughout all these flashbacks. Oh, yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, I don't know about this. お前らにはあれだ。エレンに見えたか。俺たちはやつを切る覚悟をしておく必要がある。そんなことさせない。お前もそっちにつくのかよ。ミカサ。エレンは誰よりも私たちを思っている。That's some foreshadowing right there. If they always say it's not going to come to that, there's a good chance it might come to that. 前線から遠ざけようとするやつだった。yeah. He did use US tools from what it seemed. The ones he did call important. Yeah, I get what John's saying. That's a good rebuttal. Fair argument. Also, fair rebuttal back on this side. There's costs. He laughed. But he laughed in like a, a very psychotic, breaking way. Yeah, oh, this is so hard. <sighs> yeah, I feel for all these guys in here. I can't lie. They're really pitting Eren against everyone. Ooh, with that transition from his eye to the moon? That was fire. I don't like this. I don't like this, though. How they're pitting Eren against everyone and what he did with Hanji, all that. I don't even have a watch on and that shit felt like it was five minutes long. Well, another fantastic episode giving us even more details and backstory onto the what's happening during these three years, which I'm just loving. Like I said, with all the craziness that's going on, I am completely down for these episodes. I'm all here for them. Oh, oh my. So many questions were answered this episode. So many questions were raised this episode. What the hell? I'm trying to even... I literally did not write a thing down because I was just so enthralled this whole time but i think my biggest thing is obviously the plan with historia so the three main points if i remember correctly for zeke's rumbling plan to protect the eldian people are we need hezaru's help we need to have historia eat zeke so she's the founding or she's the beast titan and then produce as many royal offsprings as she's able to which she's gone against that plan on her lonesome because she was supposed to do this after Zeke arrived, which Zeke's arrived right now, but she's already pregnant. She chose, she got pregnant from someone who's known her for a long time, lived in her area. I assumed it would be a member of the Scouts, but no, worked for the orphanage, was throwing rocks at her to try to get her attention when she was young. It's, I've, they didn't show him though, and she was the one who approached him. And then when they were drinking and getting pissed about it, the guy who was bringing, gonna grab more wine said, Niccolo, this one, is there a Marley plan, like, secretly about, I, oh, but then, I trust Niccolo, I don't know. He said this one as if, like, they were getting them drunk on purpose, but I don't know, I don't know, maybe they have some ulterior agenda that's not against Eldia, but also not against, I don't know, maybe, I have no idea. 
I'm so curious about Historia, though. First off, I'm hating what's going on with Aaron. Like, I completely get what he's saying and get his point, but it's just like he didn't want to agree with Zeke's plan, so he kept trying to come up with his own plan. They weren't working, and then he literally went off on his own and did his own thing, forced everyone else to come in, so they're upset with him. But he... That whole, I'm, I just keep going back to that Hanji scene. He's just gotten so dark. He would never do that to a superior, no matter how strong he was. I think, damn, I want to say Levi needs to smack him a couple of times, give him like a fucking, you know, put him in line. But at this point, having the Attack Titan, the Founding Titan, and the Warhammer Titan, I think he's pretty much indestructible. He could literally just go in the Warhammer Titan's cocoon and wreck havoc and no one stopping him because there's no jaw titan here the jaw titan was the only device that's literally like andy's crystallization there's nothing he could do he could be the same exact thing which i get why connie and all of them are, are wondering if he had chosen side with zeke now that he's talked to zeke and then he's cool with zeke's plan but it's a huge argument he's like i get, i get the argument i get both sides i at this point, I'm more on the side of John and Connie, sadly, even though I get I get 100% why Mikasa would feel like that. She technically knows him better than anyone there. She knows him better than any remaining alive person. But from the things he's shown, because you're supposed to take people at their actions, he's uh, getting a little unhinged. So I, along with Armin, John, and Connie, would be like, yes, of course, we're still going to go along with everything as we've been told. But just in case anything happens, we all need to be prepared. Just prepared. In case it doesn't happen, great. Nothing happened. That's sweet. But we all need to be prepared for the possibility of Aaron fucking going off. And then Armin was mentioning we have more Titan fluid, so now we can technically have someone else inherit them if we wanted to. Which, that was two years ago where Aaron was talking about he has five years left. So he has three years left. So this should be interesting. I like I said, I just have no idea what's going to happen. I loved uh, finding more about the Ackermans and how they were a descendant of the Shogunate when the Great Titan War did happen and Fritz blocked off the island with the walls and everything, like ceased contact with the outside world, took as many Eldians as he could over. One Shogunate baby was left and produced Ackerman offspring and then generation after generation after generation 100 years we have people like Kenny, Levi Mikasa so I'm curious at Mikasa and Levi's direct relationship between each other but also I don't know man there's just so many like I said so many answers that were given so many questions that were given as well but I loved the Hizaru and learning more about Mikasa. I just, I, oh my God, the show is amazing. It really is. I do have a question from the Discord that I'm about to answer real quick. If you guys don't know, I have a QA section on the Discord. You guys can answer, ask me any questions about any shows that I'm doing, and I'll answer them for, a, you know, about that show. This one comes from <laughs> the name of this Discord user is hilarious. It's Gabby Brown's Rifle. I, I hate that rifle. The rifle has done so much horrific stuff. But Gabby Brown's Rifle asks, uh, a bit of a weird question, I admit, but stick with me here. When do you think Attack on Titan changed from a standard shonen battle series about killing mindless titans to a much deeper personal and political conflict? A lot of people have varying answers, so I'm interested to hear what you think was the turning point, so to speak. This can be a moment, episode, or an entire arc. Uh, I will be honest, I did read this question a little earlier, so I kind of gave an answer. My I was a little prepared because I didn't want to think, sit here and think for like 20 minutes with you guys, but I think... Season three was the perfect transition into this because season one was getting our characters ready to face this threat. Season two was getting a lot more questions, mysteries about this threat. Season three was telling us what the threat actually is. And then season four is dealing with that threat. So season three sets up the whole issue of Titans not being our only enemy with Kenny coming into play, the, our own government being corrupt, and okay, Fritz, all that, you know, Historia learning she's the queen, all this stuff kind of gave us, oh, there's Titans in the background, but also the world is much, much bigger. And so that kind of set us up for the possibility of the basement. And when the basement came, that's when everything stopped. It's when everything's oh, outside. It's like, okay. So the, it's like, okay, there's people out there. We're not in the situation we thought we were. This is a whole entirely different reality than what we assumed. So that was the ultimate 
pivoting point, in my opinion, season three, episode 19, 20, whatever the basement was. And then it really submit. So it set up at the beginning of season three, it flipped on the basement and then cemented at the end of season three when Aaron is, you know, they're at the beach, something they've wanted to do for so long. It's It's been the shonen goal forever, escape the walls, what's out there, mystery, adventure, the world. Oh, the world is a fucking piece of shit and we have to deal with that. So it just has to do with you know, realizing that uh, the root of all evil in the world is humans, pretty much. So I don't know. I, it's a it's a really good question. Gabby Brown's rifle. I would say season three though, as an entirety, which was my favorite season so far. So I mean, maybe there's that. But you know, I enjoyed this episode so much. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you guys want to rewatch this episode in the full length and or watch maybe next week's in full length, check out that Patreon down below. Follow me on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter at Dapper Darius. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys later. Peace out.